Hey there guys, gals, and non-binary pals, it's DMG and welcome back to Blitz and today we are going to have a tank review on the Type 59 Patton. I know Bushka and Skate have been around a little bit longer doing tank reviews, but I guarantee you this will be the review that knocks your socks off. Shoutouts to Spirit of the Law for doing this kind of review and inspiring me to bring this concept to Blitz. I really appreciate it. I just happened to be doing my 100 game run in the Type 59 Patton, and I thought it would be a great time for a tank review considering I just received the number one ranking on the North American server for the tank. I feel like I have a good idea of how it's played and how to grade it. Let's get into it. From this point forward, we will be instilling a higher quality video on this channel. The Type 59 is the Tier 8 premium Chinese medium tank that can be bought in the store uh, as of making this video. It's not quite the best tank, but I'll get more into why. I grade on three categories, the first being meat, the second being damage dealing, and the third being spotting. These are the three main competitive roles for tanks found in meta at the highest levels, so I feel like those are great areas to start grading vehicles on their potential to carry games. The Type 59's meat capability is okay at best. Uh, that's the armor profile right there, but let's look at that HP of 1400. It's pretty standard across the board for Tier 8 medium. It's higher than some, but lower than others, and really falls in line right at the average of Tier 8 medium, maybe only being just slightly above. The armor profile this is taken from the perspective of an FCM 50T, uh, looking flat on with its regular AP. It's not too great. Uh, the front is easily penable. Of course, you can see the hatch and the right weak cheek point on the turret. The picture doesn't really get too much better when you angle either. It's not very fantastic. It, you do minimize the profile a little bit and you get that nice side scrape, but the front still easily penable even when angled. Not really something that I'd recommend trying to do going into a brawl with high penetration vehicles like the FCM. However, going into a brawl with the T23 E3, this tank can do some good work, or let's say the Comet, bouncing all of their shots and me penning every single one of mine. Uh, also keep in mind that the tumor on top is quite a problem. If you sit there and just let them shoot at it, they will pen you. That is on Middleburg, a side-scraping IS-6 will penetrate every single time. Try to turn that weakness into a strength by using the cupola like a pendulum to bait shots while dealing damage in return, like you just saw. So overall, I'd give the armor profile a B. It's not fantastic, but it is workable enough and can bounce shots against the lower tier guns. As a damage dealer, this tank does rank among the highest in DPM for Tier 8 medium, even surpassing that of the Mutz and the Indian Panzer. I know the T-44 is a little bit off with its 122mm gun. I forgot to change it. Uh, please forgive me for that. But regardless, it would even rank higher than that too. It can hit shots. The gun is okay in terms of accuracy. It's not the best. I do recommend running the gun laying drive. But of course, you will be able to hit shots at range like this on mediums that stand still and TDs that do not have the best reverse speed. Here's a shot on the T-34-2. Then you see the Borsig to my right. I'm going to shoot through the house or the shed and pen the, penetrate the Borsig twice and once with HE. Even that slow shell velocity can be mitigated if you aim. However, for most players, it is not the case. It will be very hard to pen moving targets at distance, slow shell velocity, and not the best penetration at 175 is not fantastic. However, if you apply the proper lead and get familiar with the tank, this is what you can do to uh, Dracula's LTTBs and the like. You will be able to set them on fire because your 90mm gun does deal more module damage than, let's say, the uh, 85 and 88mm guns you see around that tier. The DPM is good. If you see here against the FCM 50T, which is pretty decent DPM, uh, it does win 9 out of 10 times, I would say, uh, if you factor in that RNG, right? It's not even really close. 
However, you know, I don't think tier 8 is all mediums and lights. What happens when you face against tanks of the heavy kind? I don't think the armor profile will be as gray. There you go with the IS-5, or let's see it angled. Uh, you're not going to pen that either with AP and using the rammer. Let's look at a low. You can pen that, but it is very difficult. Even a cupola war, uh, it is difficult, and granted, you know, I can do this because, you know, I hate to brag here, but I am able to hit these kinds of shots. I don't think the everyday player will be able to flutter and do this comfortably. Don't worry, there, I know people have been asking for a flutter aiming video. There will be one coming, but if you look, this is quite difficult, and I would say for most drivers, you will be worse for wear. It is quite difficult to pen a haul down IS-5 unless you use calibrated shells. Now, we will have a look at what that looks like, but in these kinds of vacuum tests, I know it isn't the most accurate thing at times, but it is interesting to look at. Now, if we look at some shots, you know, these kinds of things, you will be able to get off with calibrated shells. These shots at the beginning of the game, not too hard. Uh, however, you do get shots like this, and you want to... Another reason for wanting it is because you miss shots like this, and it really sucks. Uh, 175 is simply not enough. Now, if we look at the DPM compared to heavies when running calibrated shells, you're getting outclassed by the Canarv and almost getting outclassed by the Tiger II, and probably getting outclassed by the low, and that's firing your AP rounds. You're probably not going to pen the low frontally, uh if he's angling well, or the IS-3 frontally if he's angling well with your AP rounds. However, if we look at it without the calibrated shells, your heat rounds still can penetrate the Tier 7 Tiger P quite easily, that tank that should not be in Tier 7. Going right through him is quite an easy task with 270 millimeters base on your heat. However, against Tier 8 heavies, yes, we can pen that Tiger 2 with AP. However, I hope this clip shows that the gun is quite unreliable you will see some shots derp into the ground and some shots bounce off the track, it seems like. That could be due to me. I do pen a shot there on the cupola, but hey, you know, I do miss some shots and some shots do not pen. I hope this shows the inconsistency of the weapon as it is not perfect. It's not your uh, reliable American gun or your super accurate German gun. I would say it's somewhere in between the Chinese and American, uh, befitting its title as the 59 Patton. Now, so this, this, I hope this really encourages people to run calibrated shells. If you can get these flank shots off, that's fantastic. But sometimes you have to fight. If we look at it with calibrated shells with AP rounds, it is not all that great either. You do bounce some shots, and I am aiming at the gray areas. You do see me aiming at the cupola there. Both cupolas, I will fire it. I do pen one of them, and I will go for a turret ring shot, showing that that is penable as well. Uh, you just have that better consistency. Now, if we go to calibrated shells with heat, you do get these reliable penetrations, but does it make it any better? I don't really think so, because in the end, you still lose these open brawls. Granted, not to say that this happens all that often, but hey, I hope these this kind of numbers game does impact you, and it makes you reflect on how to play the tank. Against a low, it doesn't really change that much, even though it has weaker alpha and technically less shots to kill. The low uh, will overcome the Type 59 Patton quite handily with most of its HP left because of its high hit point pool. And now, if we go to another heavy in the tier, let's look at the Carnarvon. Uh, the game doesn't really change that much, and the results don't either. You simply get burned down by healthy tanks with higher DPM running calibrated shells. Now, so this is the interesting talking point. Should you run calibrated shells or rammer? I'd still run calibrated shells because not all fights go like this, uh, but keep in mind that your DPM will be equal with heavies. If you can get these kinds of flank shots, it's great. As you can see with an IS-3 Defender, I am using the rammer and I am penning the side quite handily. It's not all that difficult, but to say that that's always going to happen, you may be in stalemate kinds of games where you're going to need to do this and you want to reliably pen. And granted, I'm using heat with the 270 uncalibrated but that doesn't change the fact that maybe you want that penetration against an E75 or an ST1, so please keep that in mind. The DPM is quite nice if you can use the gun, though. Please watch what I do against this Tiger II as he will lose his hit points very quickly. It's not all that great, but hey, against if you can get those side shots against Tier 8s and Tier 7s, that's fantastic. But like, like I said, you don't know what you're going to see in the random matchmaker. You, when you press battle, you don't know if you're going to get that 
top tier or bottom tier. So it is better to avoid that risk, I would say, for most players and run the calibrated shells as opposed to the rammer. I mean, the gun depression is quite effective at making it a damage dealer, and I'd give it a B plus. But shots like that, where you miss, you know, prevent it from being an A. I would say as a spotting, in the final category, it is good enough and fast enough to get to locations like this and get those shots off and get those early spots off to see where they're going. Uh, it is able to circle around heavies. It is able to extract itself as you are looking at right now. I'm able to pull back away from the IS-5 and then the spotted VK-100P. And then I'm able to get around even though he tries to block my uh, lane of driving and force me up. Uh, granted, this isn't the best VK-100 driver, I don't think, as he struggles to pen me uh, a few times and misses with his gun. But the point is that the mobility is okay. It's not fantastic. It doesn't have the giddy up tier for tier like a Centurion 7-1 and it doesn't have the top speed like a Object 140 tier for tier. However, you can get to locations in a timely manner. As you see, I can get to the Falls Creek bush uh, where you're supposed to spot in a relatively time timely manner. I'm able to see mediums and heavies uh, should they cross or even light tanks to that degree. The cupola does make it kind of a double-edged sword for with what you're spotting. As you can see, the power-to-weight ratio is only 0.1 higher than that of the IS-3, so up to 30 kilometers an hour, you have the same mobility as an IS-3. Past that, you have slightly better because of your better terrain resistances. Going up the hill on mines, you, are, you do get here in a reasonable amount of time. 18 seconds off the clock means you're doing pretty well, and up a hill, here we go again. You can see the IS-3 doing well uh, with the Type 59 patent. You are doing quite uh, decently there, but not enough I would say put it in a better category. It does struggle getting over hills. Mobility category, I would give it a B. Uh, as you just saw, I think this clip, the short little clip, will illustrate everything kind of coming together. I do think that it is a okay tank. Is it worth the price? Only if you know how to play it. And granted, that applies to a lot of tanks, but really, especially this one, because its strengths really are hampered by its weaknesses, you know, with the tumor, with the low penetration. Otherwise, if those were removed, if this tumor was gone, this would be such a fantastic tank. You'd be able to haul down, bully pretty much anything in the game, running calibrated shells with 297 calibrated heat penetration. Uh, you do see the mobility and the gun coming to play here. I am running calibrated shells, but overall... I would give this a B, I think. It's not all that great, um, but it is adequate enough. It does pass the test in enough categories. My win rate wasn't the highest in it, and for that reason, I don't think it is all that reliable, coming in at about 65% for a 71% career player. As you can see, you're able to abuse the heat penetration against the heavy tanks. And on the roofs right there, I'm able to penetrate again. Um, is this tank good? Yes, but like I said, only if you can play it well. I really hope you enjoy these kinds of videos. This is the kind of tank review that I have wanted to produce. This is what I'm looking for. Um, I think I'm going to be doing this from now on. For tank reviews, not for all videos, for tank reviews, I'm going to be trying to do this once a month. Uh, I think that producing this quality of video will be good and great for the channel. Please spread the word if you like it, and please repost, because I guarantee you, you have seen nothing like it. Mid-game, this tank, I would say, is at its best, but in the early game, because of not the best speed, it, it is hampered just enough. The late game isn't fantastic either, as the cupola will minimize defensive opportunities. However, you can shoot their cupolas as well and be able to micro the opponent down with ease. I hope this higher quality of video attracts new viewers to the channel. I think this is the kind of review necessary, or at least four tank reviews, the kind of style that is required, and I hope this more technical approach while not showing just mastery games, will give better results. Like I said, I'm not here to throw tank stats at you or just to throw three mastery games and say, hey, buy this tank. No, I'm not about that. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like. Thank you for allowing me to share my passion with you today. 
and I hope to see you next time.